now upon the first day of the week when Sunday comes. Um, our text really begins in the 55th chapter as was read uh, a 55th verse of the 23rd chapter of Matthew that was read. Jesus' body had been on the cross on Friday. Sometimes we don't realize what Jesus had to go through. The word excruciating, you'll see in that word crucify. And so he went through excruciating pain. And when persons were hanging on the cross during this time, vultures and birds literally came and would eat them alive. And so the religious leaders, because it was Passover, they didn't want this horrific, terrible scene to be so well seen or known because crucifixions were not done in secret. Uh, if, if we can make a modern example, we have the Capitol Hill area where the White House and the Capitol and all the monuments are. But from that, you'll see Union Station is not that far away or National Airport. It would be there that the crucifixions would take place so that everybody could see it. This was not done in the dark. Right. Lynchings were not done in the dark. Right. If you've seen any pictures of lynchings, they were done in broad daylight, and thousands of persons came. And they were dressed up because they were coming from church. And so in many similar ways, crucifixion was done so that everybody could see it so that persons would know if you fool around with the Roman government, this is what's going to happen. And fool around with white racists, this is what's going to happen. So in a similar way, thousands of persons would come and watch crucifixions. But because it was the Passover, the most holy of Jewish holidays, uh, they would allow persons to come and take the bodies of those who had been crucified down from the cross so the birds would eat them. So a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea had asked Pilate, or said, we heard, begged Pilate to take Jesus' body down. They gave him permission. And so um, Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man, so he had his own tomb, a new tomb that had just been carved out. And nobody had ever been placed in this sepulcher or tomb before. So Jesus was the first and the only one. And, and Joseph of Arimathea put his body in there on Friday. The women who had been at the cross, Mary, Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and John, uh, Joanna, and some other women, had looked at the crucifixion from afar, and the crucifixion and the sepulcher were nearby. And so they had seen Jesus' body being put into the sepulcher. And they were hoping to get there before Friday night ended to prepare or embalm his body. Because on Saturday, the Sabbath, they could not do any work. And so they were unable to prepare all of the things, all the spices, all of the embalming um, things they had to do before the body was put into the tomb. And so they had to wait Saturday and now early Sunday morning before the dew was on the roses. Early. They, they probably, now Sunday morning is about five or six. Early Sunday morning is about three or four. So early Sunday morning, and it, and it wasn't next door. It'd be like walking from here to uh, National Harbor. It was a long walk. And, the, and as they were walking, they were walking to the sepulcher where Jesus' body was. Uh, and as they walked to the sepulcher, they had to go by the cross. And as they went by the cross, their mind was on death, the cross. Their mind was on how things had turned out so terribly. Their mind was on not what was going to happen, but how bad things were now. That their mind was on sickness, not health. Their mind was on death, not life. Their mind was on how they can't get the job instead of how they are going to get the job. That their mind was on how their bills can't be paid instead of how their bills could be paid. That their mind was on how down they were instead of how up they were. Has anybody ever walked by a cross and your mind began to reflect about how th bad things were? And because you were walking by a cross, you were missing the resurrection? 
and this is what was going on with the women. They, it was a funeral procession, so to speak. There were no undertakers. They, they were going, and, and many of you grew up in communities and where uh, the funerals or the wakes of your loved one were in the house. Before uh, funeral directors would come and take them to a morgue and then take them and have it at the church, it was in the house. And so in this instance, the women of God were the funeral directors, so to speak. They were the ones that were going to embalm the body. They went by the cross, and now they entered into the sepulcher with the spices that they had prepared for embalming. And be very clear, it took a lot of work for them to pick these spices. It, they, they couldn't go to Safeway and Giant and ask the clerk, where can I get embalming spices? And he would say, aisle five? No, they, 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 they had to make it. They, they, had to, they had to make it. Some of you grew up in communities where Big Mama made the food. I mean, she peeled the apples for the apple pie. She peeled the potatoes, sweet potatoes for the sweet potatoes. You went out in the garden and got the greens. Uh, it was a case by which you killed the chicken. That's why you didn't want to make the chicken a pet. You, you, <laughs> On Thanksgiving, you, you killed the turkey. It, it just wasn't prepared. No, you had, you, you had to work. The women had to work for these spices. There was no one that they could go to. And so after they had done this preparation on, on, on Friday, couldn't do it on Saturday, they now went to the sepulcher, went to the tomb, went to the grave uh, in, in a posture of defeat. And as they got to the sepulcher, the Bible says that as they got there, a stone had been rolled away. A, a stone had been put in front of the sepulchers, all sepulchers, all graves, so that once the dead body was there, you couldn't just easily come in. It was a heavy stone. Some of you have porches or, or you have decks in which you have a door on a sliding door that you have to open and shut, to, but it's a sliding door. The stone was the same way, but they didn't have all of the engineering we have today, so it was hard to move. It took about five or six people, uh, men, strong men, to move the stone. So when they got to the sepulcher, got to the grave, got to the tomb, they were surprised. The stone had been rolled away. And be very clear, the stone had not been rolled away for Jesus to get out. The stone had been rolled away for them to get in. Because anytime God rolls away a stone for you, it's so that you can enter in to what you thought was dead by faith. And so when Moses decided to enter in to the Red Sea, he had to enter in by faith. When Joshua was walking around the Jericho wall, they had to walk around in faith. When Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro got into the fiery furnace, they had to go in by faith. When Daniel got into the lion's den, they had to go in by faith. When Esther got into the king's chamber, she had to go in by faith. Or when Dr. Martin Luther King got into a Birmingham jail, he had to go in by faith. When Nelson Mandela got into Robbins Island, he had to go in by faith. Some of you had to go into dead things where you thought nothing could happen. Your dreams have been deferred. You went in but God let you in, and even though there wasn't much, you had some faith. Yeah. It was in the back of your mind. It, it wasn't in the forefront. You're pretty much given up on that dream of what you were going to do in your profession. You, you had pretty much given up the dream of going back to school. You've given up the dream of writing the book. You've given up the dream of making any money. You've given up the dream of a business. You've given up the dream of success. You've given up the dream of whatever that dream may be. But, but in the back of your mind, it, it's still there. And so you, they go into the sepulcher. But God lets them in with an inkling of faith, and they look around. And, and as they look around, they see nobody. Their the Lord Jesus is not there. And, and it came to pass that they were perplexed. They, they were wondering, where in this tomb, where is Jesus? We don't understand what's going on. Can, can you see Moses in the Red Sea? Perplexed. I'm in it now, but how am I going to get out? Can you see Daniel in the lion's den? I'm in it now, but how am I going to get out? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fire. I'm in it now, but how am I going to get out? 
Esther in the king's chamber. I'm in it now, but how am I going to get out? <laughs> Dr. King, I'm in this Birmingham jail, but how am I going to get out? <laughs> Nelson Mandela, I'm in this Robbins Island. I'm in this prison, but how am I going to... Has anybody ever gotten into something and you wonder how you're going to get out? Uh, how, God, how are you going to work this thing out for me? And, and, how, how, I'm in school, but how am I going to pay for it? I got the house, but now how am I going to pay the mortgage? I, I got the car, but how is it going to work out? I, I, I'm in this marriage, but how is it going to work out? I'm, uh, uh, I'm in this situation. I'm in this hospital bed, but how am I going to get out? Has anybody ever been in a perplexing situation where you didn't know how you were going to get out? Mom and daddy died. How am I going to get out? Friends have left me. How am I going to get out? The women were perplexed, and in the midst of their perplexedness, the Bible says, Behold, those of you who've been following Bible study, even in Revelations, know anytime you hear the word behold, something's getting ready to happen. Can you look at somebody and say, Behold? <laughs> and when God says, Behold, it's going to be big. Yeah, don't, don't think it's going to be something small. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you ever could think or imagine. And, and, and some of you right now are still walking by crosses. You're still in the dead place. You're still in the dream deferred place. You're still in a place where it can't happen. It won't happen. It's been too long since it happened. But Resurrection Sunday ought to build up, well up something inside of you. Despite what I've gone through, despite how perplexed I might be, God is getting ready to turn my negativity into positive. God is getting ready to turn my sickness into health. God is getting ready to turn me being down to being up. God is getting ready to turn my setback into comeback. God is getting ready to turn my burdens into blessings. God is getting ready to shift things from a way by which I'm giving up to I know I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Do I have a witness in the house? And so they're in this perplexing and they give you a lesson when you're in perplexion what you need to do. The thing that they said, all of a sudden, behold, they saw two angels in white raiment and they bowed down. And as they bowed down, that's when fear was overcome by faith because that's when the angels started to speak and say, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Anytime you start to worship in the midst of your perplexion, anytime you start to praise in the midst of your doubts, God can begin to speak to your heart to let you know what you have been praying for, what you have been believing for, that God will start welling up on the inside. It ain't dead yet. Why are you seeking it? in a place by which miracles happen. Now, if you came to church this morning and you're watching on streaming and you're a person of fear and doubt, woe is me, can't do this, can't do that, you're in the wrong place. You can go to the bar for that, you're in the wrong place. You can go to the casino for that, you're in the wrong place. But if you're in church, you're in the house that the Lord built. If you're in church, you're in a place of miracles. If you're in church, you're in a place by which God can do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can think. So, so, so stay here because you came because you had to have some faith. You wouldn't have come just to waste your time. You came, you're watching because deep down inside, you're believing that somehow, some way, God's going to work this thing out. Why do you believe it? Why do you have that inkling, mustard seed of faith? Because if he did it before, he can do it again. Can you look at something? You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I, I wish you could see where I used to be. I'm not where I want to be, but hallelujah, I'm not where I used to be. I have had some prayers answered. I have had some things done. I have had some doors closed. I've had some doors open up. Had, my body has been healed. God has done something, and I'm believing today, if he did it before, I can do it again. I'm not wasting my time in church to leave the same way I came in. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you and me, 
my soul cries out hallelujah there's a breakthrough on this resurrection sunday getting ready to happen for me so the angel said why are you down why are you gloomy why are you looking for the living amongst the dead he's risen he's risen why is he risen for when sunday comes things that are dead rise again on resurrection sunday things that were lost become found on resurrection sunday dreams that were deferred become alive on resurrection sunday hopelessness turns into hope on resurrection sunday tears turn into praise on resurrection sunday grief turns into comfort on resurrection sunday when you have been right back push back laughed at you get didn't say i'm getting out of this because i've got a resurrected lord inside of me do i have a witness in the house and so with this um, sunday comes uh, and the angels say don't you remember hallelujah i remember when i didn't have any money in my pocket i remember when i didn't have 75 cents uh, to get out of a parking lot minister cage i remember that when i looked under the seat uh, and had all those french fries uh, and all that dust uh, god put 75 cents uh, under my driver's seat to get out of a parking garage i'm not talking about big things yet but i'm talking about if you never had a problem you'd never know that god could solve i remember when we had to pay 200 dollars of rent sweetheart and we didn't have the money but god had an envelope with 200 dollars underneath the door when we came in for bible study i remember when our Toyota Corona broke down and didn't have the money to get it fixed, but it broke down right in front of a filling station. And when we brought it in, pushed it in, the man said, all you need is an oil change. And it cost $2.50. And I had $3 in my pocket. I remember when my heart started beating out of rhythm and the doctors were scratching their head at 24 years of age I had left the church I stopped going to the church but on that night on that day I said father I know I haven't been doing what I ought to do praying like I ought to pray but right now I need you more than ever before I remember when I went to the doctor the heart that was beating out of rhythm started beating in rhythm I remember the doors he's opened I remember the ways he's made I remember how he's done the miraculous anybody here remember what God has already done he put food on your table clothes on your back and don't think that you did it by yourself I remember when mama prayed for me I remember when daddy prayed for me don't think I was born a preacher no I left the church I had nothing to do with the church this was the opium of the people these were hypocrites I had nothing but God heard my mama's prayer God heard my daddy's prayer God heard my grandma and gra is anybody here today in church because God heard the prayers of those who love you and he could not allow you to stray too far because he had a blessing with your name on it they remembered and when they remembered they remembered that he had said when I am brought to Jerusalem sinful men are going to crucify me but on the third day I'm going to rise again in other words they remembered what the Lord had said they remembered he's the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star they remembered when you go to the valley of the shadow of death you'll fear no evil they remembered that by his stripes you are healed they remembered I am the resurrection and the life and when loved ones die they shall live again they remembered that I'm a rock in a weary land they remembered that goodness and mercy will walk with you all the days of your life they remembered I am your shepherd and you shall not want they remember 
I'm the bishop of your soul. They remembered I'm the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. They remembered can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. They remembered he picked me up, turned me around, planted my feet on solid ground. They remembered how they had been thinking one way, but God flipped the script and they thought another way. They remembered when they used to be down, but now they're up. They remembered when they used to be sick, but now they're well. They remembered when they used to be poor, but now they had a little money. They remembered that the Lord had brought them a mighty, mighty long way and they couldn't keep it to themselves but hallelujah they went over the hills and everywhere to let them know he's not dead he's yet alive I come by to tell somebody I don't care how you feel he's not dead he's yet alive how do I know because when Sunday comes I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me when Sunday comes you ain't seen nothing yet when Sunday comes he will do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can think or imagine when Sunday comes glory hallelujah God wants all things together for your good anybody glad it's not monday it's not tuesday it's not wednesday it's not thursday it definitely ain't friday it ain't saturday but yeah sunday has come and when sunday comes blessings come up. when sunday comes joy come I'm trying to stop but when I think of all the Sundays God has given me all the blessings he showered down upon you and me my soul I don't know about your soul but my soul cries out not for a football game not for NBA playoffs but my soul cries out hallelujah because God has made ways out of no ways can you stand on your church and if you're glad that Sunday has come if you're glad that God has flipped the script for you if you're glad you're in the house of miracles if you're glad that God can do anything but fail if you're glad that even when you don't feel like it, and even when you don't think it's gonna happen, God's getting ready to open a supernatural door for you. Talk to me, Sarah. Is anything too hard for God? Yeah, Moses did go in the Red Sea, but he got out. Can you look at somebody and say, you're getting out? Daniel did go into the lion's den, but God gave him immediate lion taming training yeah they did go into the fiery furnace but God put an air conditioner and got them out Esther did go into the king's palace but the king did stretch a scepter towards her and said Esther you are in the kingdom for such a time as this every woman raise your hand you are in the kingdom for such a time as this Dr. King did get out of that jail but he wrote a letter before he got out. Nelson Mandela did get out of the prison, but he came out as a president. I'm talking about here you are doubting God. You've got too much evidence to what God is getting ready to do. Do I have a witness in the house? Yeah, he's not dead. He's yet alive. 